Hey, this is Perry from Unga Guitars here, out of frame. Um, uh, what I'm demonstrating here, or I'm going to demonstrate, is how I bend uh, my acoustic guitar sides um, over a hot pipe. In this case, I have um, one of the pipes, uh, might be from LMI, might be from Stumac. Um, I don't know, I bought it so long ago. Um, anyhow, the heat element burned out. And even then, it, it never got hot enough to uh, accomplish what I needed. So, this is how I rig it up. Um, I have the torch directly on the aluminum pipe. Um, or whatever the hell it's made out of. And uh, what I try and accomplish is I want the water to just sizzle right off of it. And right, boil right on the surface like that. And um, once I get it to that point, I try and keep it there. So I am going to demonstrate um, how I bend wood. I'm going to start. Uh, so I have some curly mango wood here that I've wet. And I, I wet it with uh, warm wood. Warm wood. <laughs> warm, actually really hot water. Um, and right here I have my waist lines drawn out here and I have my mold in the background right over here. And uh, this is also my show side and because I'm a knucklehead you can't really see it. I go ahead and I write show side. This is going to be the top side, this is the back side, and this is the base side. My uh, acoustic guitar shape is a uh, is not symmetrical um, so I'm going to go ahead and give these sides a little wet down right in the waist where I'm going to go ahead and bend I'm going to go ahead and wet that pipe pull it off just a little bit and hopefully I've got a good angle here so since my I want my show side up this is going to go in the waist area, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this on the pipe. I'm going to rest my hands on the sides, but I'm not trying to push them down at all. And I'm going to gently rock. And already you can see, once the wood hit the pipe, it wants to relax and do something. What I don't want to do is force it down too fast and have that something be break, especially because this is a figured wood. So I'm gonna rock it, and I'm gonna stay in the area that I wanna bend. And I'm gonna go ahead and keep rocking it, and I'm gonna let that moisture on the wood, all that water, I'm gonna let that create steam. And if I'm in a situation where I really wanna keep that bend going, what I'll do is I'll take a squirt bottle, and uh, while I'm bending, I'll just wet the side down from underneath and from the top. And that will help me keep that bend going. And I just want you want to be real patient with it. The wood's going to bend or it's going to break. And if you force it, it'll most likely break. Sometimes it'll break anyways. There's a lot of stresses that we can't account for in a lot of species of wood. Uh, I've definitely had wood shatter that I didn't expect to shatter. Uh, I've encountered what I call flake cracks or like kind of cracks through the layers of the wood. I've had like wood, it looked like it delaminated on me. Uh, mostly mahogany that, that tends to do that. Uh, but I want to keep moving in the general area that I want to bend. And you can see this bend is starting to form. So when I get it nice and formed about here, I'll go ahead and pull it off the pipe and I can check the bottom. I'm not burning it yet. <laughs> it's very easy and I'm going to blow on it. I'm going to blow on it while it's hot. And then I'm, that sort of locks that shape in. As you can see, I'm no longer holding it. Uh, and I'm going to come and check it on my mold. And at this point, if I wanted to be lazy and go ahead and clamp it in with the waste block, I could do that. This wood is, is very forgiving. It's very malleable. Uh, mango wood is very in 
my experience or opinion is very similar to working with mahogany. It seems like a cross between mahogany and maple with the look of very similar to koa. Uh, it's a really forgiving wood, really beautiful wood to work with. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and sit here on that waist until I get it bent. So the most important things here to take into consideration is that the thickness, there, there is no blanket thickness that will work for every species of wood. In fact, there is no blanket thickness that you can take every piece of wood to that will guarantee you a good bend or a bend without breaking or burning. Uh, there just isn't. Wood is an organic substance and it really has its own plan. So the best that you can do is be open to working with it and sort of read how it's bending or kinking or if you see breaks, be able to act um, to possibly avoid them or know how to repair them. Um, you know, when we're working on our own builds or maybe custom builds for customers, sometimes we only have the funding to buy one set and that set might break. So it's very important to know how to repair any cracks that may avoid. That may happen, may avoid, may happen. Um, so um, what I've done here, and uh, I'll grab the camera now. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the flame off. Um, I have my acoustic guitar molds. So uh, a few quick words about my acoustic guitar shape. It is asymmetrical or offset. Whatever you want to call it, um, it's my, uh, me as an artist. Um, I spent many years building your traditional steel string guitars. That's, that's what I call them, traditional American steel strings. Your Martin Styles, Gibson Styles, and um, I decided that if I was going to do all the work to build an acoustic guitar, that I was going to do my own thing. So you can see I have both of my molds here. Um, uh, you can see my heat blanket back there. I do use a heat blanket. What I am going to be demonstrating is how I bend wood on a hot pipe. Um, so right here, I have my pipe. This used to be um, one of the benders you could get from Alamire, Stumac. Uh, I don't know which one I got it from. All I know is that the heat element burnt out and um, I decided that either way it wasn't hot enough so I started taking a torch to it and I've been doing it ever since I have the torch just set on the bench and I have some little riser blocks to raise the pipe up to a decent level to clear the torch while I'm bending so I made the mistake of uh, not pressing record and I have my waist bent but there's a couple of uh, good things to see here so if we look up close right here I have a little tick mark that I can in my waist that I can line up with my mold and the other thing that I've done here is I've over bent my waist and the reason why I did this or why I do this is while I'm bending either side the upper bout or the lower bout the tendency is for the waist to open up so if I over bend it as I wet the, the wood while I'm bending it, if it opens up, it's actually gonna help me. So, um, with that said, I'm gonna put the, all right, miss me. Okay, so the temperature is right now boiling lava hot, which is really good. You wanna start hotter than you need to be because you can always cool it down. So. What you want to see is, let me see over here. So you want to see that water sizzle on the top. You don't want to see it bounce off. So right now I'd call that perfect to where it really boils on the surface. Um, hotter than not is better. If you're not hot enough, if the bender is not, or the pipe is not hot enough, 
you're going to run into a, a lot of trouble getting the piece of wood to bend. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm back here on my mold. And of course I don't have a pencil ready. So I'm going to grab a pencil. And I'm going to line up my center line. And I'm going to rock this forward here. There's a flat spot, a flattish spot here. And then there's the point where the whole thing starts to bend. So I'm going to go ahead and make a mark right here where the serious bend starts to happen. And that's where I'm going to start bending. So if I set this on here, I can hear the, the, the water start to sizzle. And what I'm going to do, because that's a rather large bend, I'm going to start rocking this over the area that I want to bend. And you can see that it's actually starting to bend. And I'm going to try and slide it. Uh, this is uh, exaggerated speed. But I'm going to try and slide it. I'm going to try and stop at my pencil line. And I can see right now that it's starting to dry out here. And this is where I want it to bend. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a spray. And in the bottle is actually hot water. And hot water, in my opinion, is a lot more helpful than cold water. It really helps to keep the moisture going. So I'm going to keep rocking it. And I have, I want to say, I'm not letting the side support the weight of my hands and my arms. Um, but I have, I'm letting gravity pull my hands down. But uh, I have control of my hands. I want the heat and the steam to allow the wood to bend with grace and ease um, rather than the weight of my hands. And when I start to get a bend, like right here for instance, and I leave, if I leave the, the hot pipe to go check it against the mold, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it up and while it's still hot, I'm going to blow on it. And this is really going to lock that in place. Now that's that's not going to move. So I can come over to my mold. And I can see how I'm doing. And if I wanted to, this wood's so forgiving. I could wet this down and lock this in place. I could actually squeeze this all the way down. Um, I'm not going to do that. I like to really lock in the shape on the pipe. I don't want any... Uh, I don't want to build in any stresses that, that I don't need to. Um, since I'm not building this guitar in a production setting, I don't have another, you know, five or six bends to do of this shape um, that I have to do for the day to, to meet my numbers for the day. That's the way a production shop would work. Um, you would bend your sides. They would cool down and then you pull them right off the bender and bend your next sides. And the way that I would do it is I'd pull them off the bender, block them up, put them in a mold and move on to my next set. Um, in this case, I am not building this for anybody but myself or anybody that may want to purchase it after it's built. Uh, so I can go ahead and take my time here and I'm going to lock this in. I want this shape to really, really fit my mold next to perfect. Um, there's not going to be, there's always going to be a kink or something to be worked out later. Um, it's always going to happen. That's the way guitar making goes. Um, so you're always going to have, if you bend uh, over on a blanket, over a form, or mold, uh, whatever you want to call it. There's always going to be an area on that mold that doesn't bend well and you can force it into the mold. You can force it into the mold and uh, go ahead and build that tension in or you can go ahead and correct that while it's happening. And um, I choose to go ahead and correct it while it's happening. 
So right now, you can't see it here, but my side is bent really nice to this shape and I made a tick mark where I want to continue the bend and I'm going to go ahead and do that there's no reason to keep watching though uh, so the the tips are you want to have a good boiling temperature if you start hotter you can always keep cooling it down and it's a great idea to start hotter to be able to cool it down you don't want to have not enough heat we want to have enough heat it'll make your life a lot easier um, you want to have your mold placed nice and close so that you can reach it easy easily um, and another tip is if you're not blending bending with the heat blanket and you are primarily using a hot pipe have your calls like your a waste block um, what you see here are places where I can put a clamp so I got a clamp right here and I can put a call in here and just clamp this down on both sides these little clamp spots are on both sides and then I have little feet here that I can also clamp to so you want to be able to clamp it down and what I like to do to ensure that my shape is really locked in is I bend it I get it to fit really good I clamp it in place, I'll spray it down, I'll spritz it with water, and then I'll hit it with a torch and dry it out, and then I'll let that sit. Um, if it's the morning, I'll let it sit till about lunch, and then I'll put my end blocks in. And uh, if it's the evening, I'll go ahead and let it sit overnight. Like I said, I'm not running a super high production shop where I am waiting on the mold and waiting on the forms and uh, having to hit numbers for the day and for the week. So, uh, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, please uh, email me. All of my inf contact information is on my website, www.ungaguitars.com. My phone number's on there. You can call me or text me with any questions, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, if you want to sign up for an online workshop, you can find all that information at the website, uh, along with all the links to the videos, uh, the link to the YouTube channel, my shop with uh, some of the tools that I make, and uh, very soon my guitars for sale. Um, so I hope this video was very helpful. That's my goal with all this stuff. I bent sides for Santa Cruz Guitar Company for almost 10 years. And I've bent a number of species of wood. Um, I've done, it's, uh, it's amazing if you work for a production shop, a really hands-on production shop, the amount of experience you will get. Um, so if you have any questions, please contact me. You can comment down below. If you found this helpful, please like and share the video. And uh, there will be many more to come. Uh, and, uh, oh, yes. And uh, as I just finished my last build, the Bang build, which was the Havelina 2, I'll be starting actually a few guitars. One will be this acoustic guitar, um, and there'll probably be a couple of different electric guitars. And a, actually, I'll be sp as specific as possible. I'm going to be building a, an electric version of my acoustic guitar. I'm going to be building an extended range guitar and uh and a bass as well um we'll be demo i'll be demos we i'll be demonstrating some uh how to do fan frets by hand how i lay it out my approach and um anyhow i look forward to sharing these videos with you and i hope they are all helpful i'm perry from unga guitars and the unga school of guitar making i look forward to seeing you next time bye bye I decided to start recording again because there's a few things that I left out so in the case that this part gets uh, moved into a time lapse but every piece of wood um, well we'll go ahead and talk uh, musician talk um, 
You want to find a good pocket. Every piece of wood has a good pocket or a rhythm that it prefers to be worked at. Um, you'll find that some wood really requires that you slow down and spend more time over the heat. And some wood is just ready to bend. It's, it just wants to bend. It, it's like it was growing to be bent into a guitar. Um, some pieces of wood will fight you the whole time. Maybe cracks will start opening up. And, uh, you know, it's all about steaming those cracks shut in those instances. Building little hold down tools. Um, I haven't really had that problem um, with any of this mango. I don't really have any other wood that I'm bending. I primarily build electric guitars. Um, and uh, so I haven't had the need to build a little hold down tool for when I have cracks that want to open up. But the important part is to find the rhythm that the wood wants to be bent at. Um, and once you find that rhythm, that's where you want to be. You want to try and keep that pace up. Um, as you keep wetting this, you know, water runs everywhere and your my waist and my upper belt are getting wet. And as they get wet, they actually open up. Um, none of these shapes are really set in stone until this piece has had the opportunity to dry thoroughly. Um, you know, like you can put it on a heat blanket and have the heat blanket dry it out. You can lock it onto the form there and then hit it with uh, the torch or a heat gun. That's a very helpful way to expedite drying out some sides into a shape. Um, in all of my experience bending all sorts of different woods, figured woods love to keep bending after you've bent them over, even after they're dry. They like to really curl in and it's, it's really nice. Um, it makes it really easy to block it up real quick and lock it into a form. But it'll keep doing that and in fact it'll keep doing it to the point where you really have to build them right away. And um, you know getting that experience working in a production shop bending sides um, really helped me understand that and understand that I'm on a timer. Uh, you can see that my waist has opened up here and if I hadn't over bent it it would actually be flat probably right now. And uh, it's, I'm going to have to tighten it up about right here. It's wanting to pop up. But otherwise, if I line up the edge and I push this down, I get very little resistance up into right here. So this is where I'm going to start my next bend. And, uh, yeah, so whether you're bending mahogany, which in my opinion is some of the easiest wood to bend, or you're bending koa, which can be some of the most difficult wood to bend. Uh, koa, in my opinion, all the koa that I've worked with tends to open up um, in all of the figure. just wants to pop right open. It's so excited. And it's so beautiful. Uh, another really easy wood to bend is walnut. Even figured walnut, like Clara walnut. Um, super easy to bend. And it smells amazing as you're working on it. For anybody who's ever worked on it, they may or may not agree with me. I think it smells amazing. Um, but this mango has got me really excited. Um, I hope I can score some more of this in the future. Um, you know, right now I build so few acoustic guitars, when I do take the time to build one, um, I tend to use materials that I really like. Um, and I think I may be building a few more out of alder. Alder is one of my favorite woods for electric guitars. 
And I've seen acoustic guitars made from older, but I've never made done back and sides out of uh, alder. So right here, it's fitting pretty nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tighten up this waist again. And then I'm gonna set this into the mold with some clamps. I'm gonna wet it down a little bit with my spray gun, and then I'm gonna hit it with a heat gun. And being that it's the evening over here, it's sort of the uh, end of my work day. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let that sit overnight, and it actually might sit for, for a couple days. Uh, during the work week, I don't necessarily get as much time in my shop. Um, I tend to spend, the, get in the most time during the weekend. I, uh, I am fortunate to have a three day weekend and um, be able to squeeze in uh, shop time whenever I need it or want it or however it may be. Um, and uh, you know, like these sort of things. So if you're if you're bending with, uh, oh yeah, and I'll talk about this heat blanket, even though I'm probably not going to use it on this build. Uh, I might just bend using the pipe. Um, the heat blanket is a cheap heat blanket um, from China, and uh, I think it cost me like 35 bucks, and uh, and it works great. I've used really expensive heat blankets, like custom-made heat blankets in the past, and, um, you know, custom-made forms, um, very similar to what I'm doing here, uh, but with a drop-down waste block that was heated, and um, I really like this heat blanket for 35 bucks. At the time, I could only afford to get one. Um, I might actually order another one very soon. Um, I may actually do that. I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this into place though. And uh, if I have two, then since I have no cutaway, I could go ahead and bend both sides at the same time. Save myself a lot of time. When you're building your shop, when you're building your acoustic guitars, uh, it's important to look at things from that sort of view, like um, investments, um, your time, is your life it is very valuable so use your time wisely uh, if you know you have limited time in my experience it only takes about 12 to 15 minutes to bend a set aside now I have a lot of experience doing this but if you get out of your own way and you let the wood let it tell you what it wants to do like you can have this stuff real done really quick save yourself a lot of time a lot of headache and uh and have a lot of success doing it acoustic instruments are so beautiful i, I think stringed instruments are beautiful in general uh, i love that we you know you have your scale length and uh, as long as everything's happening in in that space everything outside of it can be art uh, so i'm perry from unga guitars in the unga school of guitar making uh, my website is www.ungaguitars.com. You can find my workshops, you can find my uh, products, you can find uh, my videos, my blog, um, all sorts of things. If there's anything that you want to see me build or uh, demonstrate, please let me know. My contact information is on my website. You're welcome to call me or text me at that number. I'm very easy to get a hold of look forward to being able to help you all in the future. Have a great rest of your evening. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.